A new trailer for Thor Love and Thunder just dropped and watching it I was inspired so in this video we are going to recreate the titles from that trailer for free in DaVinci Resolve. And it's going to look something like this. Oh. There. There is a lot going on in this effect especially behind the scenes there's tons of small tips and tricks I am very excited to show off so let's get started. I'm going to drag a new fusion composition to my timeline, extend that out a little bit. And then once we are over that, we can click this button to open the fusion page. And very, very quickly, if I preview this effect, you can see we sort of have three main elements going on. We have this star field in the background. And if we zoom in a little bit, we can actually see that those stars do twinkle in and out as well as they have a uh, subtle like chromatic aberration or a RGB split from the outside coming towards the inside. We have this smoke field behind the text with two different colors, uh, this blue and then this red color down here. And then we have our main text, which itself has several stuff going on. So I will hop back into our empty uh, fusion composition. And I'm going to start by just clicking this button to add a fast noise effect. If we preview that on viewer one, just by pressing one, uh, it, once we have both VR viewers up, haha, here we have the standard default noise effect. You play, nothing happens. It's just kind of foggy texture, but this is very, very powerful. What we are going to do here is crank up contrast, crank up scale. And even though these sliders end at a certain point, you can always type in a number manually that is larger than that. So we're going to take this scale up to like 40, maybe 50. Cool. I'll only mess with this detail until I feel like we've got a certain amount. I'm going to bring this contract even more up to maybe like 12. And then I'm going to bring down this brightness by default. It only goes down to negative one, but we can then bring that down to like negative five. And now you start to sort of see what's going on here. If I drag that down anymore, a few of these dots will disappear until we just have a few in this scene. And if we take these and pull up the seethe rate a little, then those stars will actually sort of fade in and out, twinkling as we go. And that can be a really, really great start for where we're going. Uh, this by default does have this transparent background layer. If we jump over to this color tab and just pull up the alpha on this color one, that will fill in the rest of it with black. Coming out of this fast noise, we can just add a soft glow as well. Uh, preview that, especially if we pull down this glow size and the gain up a little bit, we can just punch those stars up a little bit so they really, really come through. Keep it a little subtle if we want. And now for that RGB split, I'm actually going to pull in a previous effect that I have made, a very simple RGB split. Uh, but I want to show off something different here um, because all effects that you have access to on the edit page, you also have access to those. Uh, natively in the fusion page. If I open up my effects library here, uh, templates, edit, here I have all my edit page effects. So I can come to effects, Sterling Supply Company, select that and scroll down. And here I have my RGB split. I can drag that uh, right in here. And because it was made in fusion, it natively comes in. I can double click that to see uh, the two nodes that were included in that. Um, but because this is also an effect, I can take the output of that soft glow uh funnel it right into that rgb split and now we are going i'll give us some more room to work here if i scale in and start to pull up the distance a little uh, make sure i am previewing that as well yes we we went very far i just want to pull it up a little bit so we get a little right just a little bit of that effect right there awesome and actually what i'm going to do and benefit from this perk actually maybe a little more a little a little bit more yeah, I am actually going to open up this effect because inside the effect, you see that this is created using these two just transform nodes, one for each color channel. But inside this group of nodes, I'm going to create a simple ellipse mask. I can stretch this out to sort of fit my scene and I can even preview that on its own viewer if I want so you can see what's going on. And I'm going to funnel this into both of these transform nodes which will function to mask that effect. Now, if I zoom in on here, there is no RGB split outside of the mask, but it is there inside the mask. I want the opposite of that. So on the mask, I will just click invert and I will soften that edge a whole lot, then maybe increase the border width to push it towards the edges. And now back on our star field, uh, we have nice cleaner stars in the middle, but out towards the edge, we get that really awesome RGB split. That's great, and we can move on. You could preview that if you want, because on this fast noise, we have that seethe right up. These do have a nice little twinkle. Um, if you play that back and based on the speed, you can always increase or decrease that. 
depending on how much twinkle you want. Or again, change this like contrast and all these different settings to really change the look of these stars. But moving on to that main smoky texture, we are once again pulling in a fast noise node. This one will be a little more straightforward. I'll pull that up on this viewer now. I'm going to scale down a little bit just so we have a little bit of that texture. I'm not going to pull up the detail too much. I'm going to nudge that seed right though. So now it is just slowly doing its own thing. And on this fast node, uh, with the node selected, I'm going to click that same ellipse mask and create sort of a similar mask. Remember, this will go behind the text. So I'm really going to soften that edge, maybe bring it down a little bit. Great. Now, there are a few different ways you could introduce color here. Um, for the specific gradient look I want, I'm actually going to create a new background uh, solid layer here. Change this type over to gradient. And going from top to bottom, uh, I am going to select sort of a nice bright pink purple color. Going to a nice big vibrant tealish color. If I preview that here. Yeah, you see sort of what we got going on. Oh, I believe I wanted these flipped. And I uh, pretty much want them to meet right in the middle, maybe with a little overlap. I want this a little more blue, and I want this a little more red. Sure, we'll see how that goes. And I'm actually going to take this fast noise and plug it into the mask input of that background layer. And now you can see we have this smoky texture with that gradient over. And you could adjust these really, really any way you want. Remember this color is happening on this other one. So you can always reposition this if you want it to be more subtle or more harsh, depending on where these are. These will be behind the text. So you have you have a little leeway there. Now we do have some interesting stuff going on. This stars layer, it looks like it's just black and white. Uh, but because of how this fast noise work, um, these dark values are like mathematically not just dark. So really to demonstrate the issue, if I combine these like I normally would and preview a merge, you are only seeing the color where there are those stars or some like texture coming through. So all we need to do to adjust that, I'm gonna create a new black background layer, um, merge my stars layer onto that, which will look the same, but I'm going to change the apply mode to lighten. And now that will figure out that behind the scenes math. So now I can connect that fog layer, preview that. And now we have this little smoky layer on top of the fog. Again, over in Fast Noise, this detail layer slider will really determine um, like how, how smoky that looks along with this contrast node. Yeah. And scale. You can always adjust these as much as you want. If you want it to be larger but more detail, go for it. Great. On to the main event, the text. And to do that, we are going to dip into the very powerful 3D system. So to start, I'm just going to navigate to this blank space. I'm going to create some 3D text. I'm going to click this button next to it to create a 3D merge. I will add a 3D camera to that. And then I will upgrade this 3D renderer. Anything you do inside the 3D system needs a renderer to get back out to an image that we would want to use in our scene. Um, but I can preview this merge at any time and see what we're working with. We have this nice 3D area. And right in this text, I can type something cool like chord, the best guy. I can take that. I can resize to my liking. I will just keep that at one for now. Uh, choose a font as well. And uh, essentially, you want to come down to extrusion, and just pull up extrusion depth, and that will give you 3D text. Uh, if you want a better view of that, come up to this little circle up here. This is the shading little drop down and change this to shadows. And now you'll see some of that texture you are working with. And again, this slider only goes up to 0.2, but you can always extend that manually as well. By default, that will extrude uh, forward, which you see uh, <laughs> completely covers our camera. So coming out of there, um, you can select your camera down in your node tree and use these transport controls right and just pull it back. And you have this fancy little window for your field of view as well. And you can also pull up the render on the second screen. So now you see that this is what the camera in the 3D scene actually sees. Luckily, we can go into that camera. I'm going to change this focal length up to something pretty extreme because we do want the effect of like the text being nice and close and a little warpy. So I'll, I'll set that to like 12. Yeah, and then we can move the camera much closer. I'm up a little bit. And then in this render 3D is where you would get the option for some of those lighting as well. Right now it's either all white or all black because we don't have any lights in our scene. But back in text, I will also go ahead and extra bold that. And now we can start working with some stuff. I'll go ahead and push the camera a little forward, bring it up. Um, I will click either this button or press W to bring up these rotation controls. So now we are looking up at the text a little bit 
Cool. I'm gonna toggle on lighting so you can see what's happening as we experiment. But now anything I uh, plug into this Merge 3D uh, will start to reflect. So I can click this button on my toolbar to create a simple spotlight. It will put it at that same default position where the camera was originally, but if we bring it back enough, oh, also make sure it is connected to that Merge 3D. There we go, you see, as we push this forward, the light cone starts to come into effect. I'm gonna move this up and then you know, give it a nice tilt down. So it's like even over it, maybe just barely touches those edges. Cool, and yeah, now we have 3D text. I'm actually gonna come into our 3D text as well and on the transform, this rotation, I'm gonna rotate that on the x-axis a little bit. Yeah, so we really see the underside of that text. I'm even gonna come in and uh, push up that extrusion. Yeah, that's that's what we want, yeah. Uh, essentially for some of the lighting where we're gonna add, you really wanna see a lot of that bottom underside of that text. That looks like an amazing starting point. I might even bring down the size just a little bit so it's good. it sits in frame a bit. And hey, I could go ahead, uh, connect that render 3 to this other merge, connect that to my media out, and yeah, that's a cool 3D space-ish title, but we can do a lot more to it, especially if we wanted to match the Thor titles. First, let's go ahead and look at some of the advanced lighting we had in the original, especially lighting that was hitting the bottom of this text. This is a really cool little uh, 3D tool, kind of a secret um, that you might not have seen before. You have spotlights here, but you also have projectors. So we are going to create a 3D projector, uh, created at the default point. I'm gonna bring it down here uh, to the side. And I am actually going to, one, make sure that is near the same merge 3D. W to rotate that, I'm gonna rotate that, check the angle, and we're actually gonna bring this, have this uh, shining back up at the underside of this text. Again, make sure it's connected to the merge 3D. And now you can sort of see, yeah, it is just blasting a white back at this text. So you could adjust this a whole bunch of different ways. Uh, I do want to keep this nice and behind the text, but rotate so it just does hit the um, back side of that a little bit. And this is a giant guessing game for all sorts of stuff. Right now, this is functionally working like a light. It's just projecting this white shape, but the projector has this little input right here. So once again, I can click that fast noise node, pull this up on preview one. I'll add detail, I'll bring the scale down just a little bit. And I messed around with this a bit on my demo. I think I'm going to click both discontinuous and inverted. And now you see we have this sort of like tenderly texture. I like a whole lot, uh, bounce off that contrast a bit. And I'm gonna hop over into color and change this color too, to just this bright red. So now we have this wild red tendrily thing and we can plug that right into the projector and you instantly see, okay, now that is what is shining onto this text. Now, if we go back into the projector or preview that Merge 3D, now when we change any of these controls, um, we have a much better idea of where this is hitting in our shape and what that is looking like. And we can adjust all of this to our heart's desire. That's hitting the bottom of that text pretty well. Um, I might go back in and change like this contrast so it's only hitting a little bit of it. And then I'm going to go ahead and do one thing. <laughs> That's come back to the fast noise. And no, I'm gonna uh, zero out this color so it is just this white shape, but for one very important reason. I'm going to duplicate that projector pull in that same fast noise effect, pull that back in the merge, it will color, it'll double up, but that's not what we want. Um, and I am actually going to uh, bring a duplicate of this projector back to the other side of this Korg text and completely rotate that around. So now it is hitting that text from a new different angle, yeah. And now in these projector controls, uh, if I set the color there, then it only colors that instant. So I'll have this red and then like a nice darker purpley. Yeah, so now we have two different colors hitting the text from different angles. Again, you could fine tune this a whole lot for a long, long time. Uh, we're grabbing different uh, areas on the bottom and they will combine in any number of ways. But hey, this, this looks real cool. Um, and hey, come back to this fast noise as well. Toggle up that seethe rate. And as our scene goes on, that texture will rotate as well. So now we have the stars flickering, we have the smoke fading in and out. And on our 3D text, uh, we have this really cool texture that's sort of fluctuating in and out all at the same time. All right, doing really cool stuff. Uh, but now for maybe like the capstone effect. If you've been around my channel at all, you might have recognized 
Proto. Proto is a free plugin I made for DaVinci Resolve for powerful energy effects. I modeled it obviously on the uh, Saber uh, plugin from Video Copilot for After Effects. Super powerful. It's everywhere for these kind of effects. I wanted to take a shot at bringing that sort of power uh, to DaVinci Resolve. And I just pushed out a massive update, Proto V2. I like it a lot. And that is what we are going to use in this scene to create that like electricity feeling look. And along the way, we're gonna add more texture to the front of this text. And to do that, I'm going to create a standard text plus effect. I will type in here, Korg. Make sure I'm using the same font and style. I'll scale that up a whole lot. And I'm gonna hop over to shading. I went a little bit more in depth here in my example and a lot of it wasn't super visible. So I'm gonna keep this a little simple. On this element one, I'm gonna change this from solid to gradient. I'm gonna to click to add another point right in the middle. And that point I'm going to name, make uh, nice and bright and white. And on either side of this, I'm gonna have these be a uh, darker blue. Yeah, and that looks a little bit closer. Um, if I very quickly toggle back to the effect, yeah, you see um, if I go to where this was, yeah. So uh, this one's pretty vibrant. We can always add that, um, which is like different shades of blue with that white stripe in the middle. I can come to that text and if I pull in these edges, then that will become much stronger and you'll have that bright white right in the middle. And you can even uh, click to create another copy to widen that band a bit. Yeah, that's a bit closer. That looks right, we will keep that for now. And I'm actually going to uh, copy that, paste it, uh, not an instanced node, which we've used in the past, it's a little more complicated, but we're keeping this as manageable as we can get it. I'm gonna come into that and in shading element, I'm gonna change that to an outline. I'll keep that nice and thin and change that back to a white solid. And from here, I'm gonna bring in Proto. If you've already downloaded all of Proto V2, then all you have to do here is just press shift space and search for Proto and you can see Proto V2 effect. I'll select that, click add. And if I preview that, you see it, wow. Now we have some stuff going on. It took the path of that text and added Proto. Um, in the effects controls, I'll click this outline to tone it down a little bit. I'm just telling it to expect a uh, outline versus a solid. And if I jump over to user, I have some of the free included presets. Some of them are really intense. I really like the Slav one, Ghost, little Wanda, some different stuff, Plasma. I am actually going to uh, come to Wanda and then go back to our main controls and just shift this color to a blue. And now we have this pretty wild blue electricity. This is totally great for what we want. And now, I'm just gonna merge those two copies of text together. And yeah, we have Korg with that texture, with this blue lightning, it looks great. Now check this out. Uh, coming from this merge, this is just a standard 2D layer, but we are going to select that and just click this button, the first in the 3D tools, Image Plane 3D. I'll click that, and if we preview that node, we see now this text is a 3D layer. And if I come to material, I can uncheck um, lighting and it will be like super bright up in there. Um, this is something we'll probably mess with once we comp it into our scene, but especially to see it well toggle off lighting. And yeah, that 2D layer is now positioned in 3D space. And this is where we can uh, start to have a little more technical fun, but still fun. I'm gonna take that image plane 3D and pipe it into our main merge 3D. And you see now it's way out there. And this is where I want to come into that image plane and turn on lighting now. So now it is so now it is receiving these lights coming through uh, all on its own, nice and bright. And I can preview that merge 3D with all our different elements. And now we're going to play a fun little game of selecting that image plane and matching it to our 3D text. You can see I bring it up in 3D space, dragging it up. I made this a bit more complicated than I need to because I did add this extra rotation on our 3D text. Uh, but I will bring that up. Uh, you do see that we have to scale up our image plane, but hey, we can do that in the transform settings. And here, there are different methods some people have recommended for um, like matching this, but hey, doing it by hand, always good practice as well. And hey, you do just want close enough, and that that is real close already, even though I can see it's not perfectly matched. We are just matching it on the camera side, but I can push that a bit closer. And you see, yeah, we're clipping through a bit, but if I hover that just above, scale it up just a bit more, and yeah, we have matched that up. I will just jump into Proto. 
um, check check my noise, check my, to see the rate on my master noise to make sure that isn't going too ham. That's a nice rate. And yeah, that looks pretty wild. I actually really like the um, added glow texture here. It looks less like real Nightling, but hey, if Korg's the hero of this story, then, then he can have a slightly different look. And now I just have to go back to the edit page. I'm going to play through and let this cache. And now that is cached. Let's take a look at what we've got. I like this so much. <laughs> Going back from my original example, like it was toned down so much. And I think just, uh, and I think like dialing all that up, it's brighter, the colors are more vibrant. The stars are doing a whole lot more. That just shows you this is built using the exact same thing, but you can end up with a lot of different looks. This Thor one uh, does both, I mean, the font plays into it a fair bit, but it does feel a bit like more classical, whereas this one feels like really, really pushing it to the limits. But I like that. We have so much stuff going on in this scene, but I think it works pretty well. The stars twinkling, I think look great with a subtle RGB split, the shifting colors on the text itself, and then the smoke texture behind it. It's amazing that so much in this scene is driven from that one fast noise node, not one node, but the one kind of node at least. And even all of Proto is built off fast noise nodes. They're immensely powerful. And so in this scene, they're driving this crazy star field, smoke, lights, and then this crazy energy texture on top of it all. And because of the power of nodes, might be a little tricky. I, I rigged this up in my first one, but we can come back to all of this text. And right now we still have to do it individually, but we can change this to anything. I did have to fiddle some of these settings a bit more, but hey, now you can tell anyone to subscribe in style. The light shining here is, pr is pretty overwhelming. <laughs> We're gonna keep it here for a bit because I really, really like how this works. And it wouldn't be hard to vastly change up this look. There are those included free presets in Proto. You could have this amazing sun or fire in space themed look so, so quickly. And especially with something like fast noise, you can customize this to an unbelievable degree. So hop in and start messing around. The 3D system is very exciting. If you haven't done any 3D stuff in Resolve or Fusion, this could be a great starting point. I'll be hanging out in the comments. Let me know what you think. Are you excited to create some titles of your own? Let me know. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.